All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you here um, online this morning. It's eight o'clock on Monday morning here in New Zealand. My name is Fabian. Um, I'm one of the licensed advisors at New Zealand Shores Immigration Consultants, and we'll be spending just over one hour together discussing opportunities for health professionals to come work and live in New Zealand. We have panelists um, today, speakers. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome my colleague, Charlotte Stockman, another one of our licensed advisors um, here at New Zealand Shores. She will be talking about the visa process um, and any immigration related matters really. And we have Prudence Thompson as well, who is Managing Director at Accent Health Recruitment, dialing in from Christchurch. Um, we have a few of Prudence teams as well in the background who will be answering um, some of your questions in the chat. Charlotte and I will also endeavor to answer some of your questions. If you have questions during the um, event, please put them down below in the Q&A rather than the chat. It's a lot more convenient for us to keep track of these and make sure all are answered. And if we run short in terms of timing, um, we'll reach out to everyone afterwards anyway um, and, and try and answer everything. All um, registrants will also get a recording of this webinar. So if you can't, um, if you've missed part of it, um, some things you haven't quite caught, um, no problem at all, uh, you'll get a recording. Cool, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna to turn to Prudence first. Um, Prudence, why New Zealand? Why move to New Zealand as a health professional? Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll start with a Māori greeting, kia ora, and ata uh, We are in Christchurch, New Zealand, and it's going to snow today, apparently, which is very unlike the centre of Christchurch, and obviously very excited children in the house this morning. Um, look, why New Zealand? I've been recruiting for 24 years and I was a nurse prior to that, um, having worked in the Middle East and the UK. So I know what you've got to look forward to, the highs and lows, the challenges of getting registration. Um, obviously with visas, you can talk to NZ Shores, but we can talk to you about um, how to get a job and why New Zealand? I think, um, <clears throat> why do we need health professionals in New Zealand is a very common question. We've got an aging population of nurses. Prior to COVID, we had a popular uh, positive net migration. Um, and as you know, patients require more intervention. They're staying alive a little bit longer and um, we need more nurses, doctors and allied health. Also um, the, the baby boom post COVID, we need more midwives. And New Zealand's a really popular place to work. The uh, patient ratio of patients to nurses is, is really positive. I think the ward environment, the clinic environment is great and medical professionals are very respected, well respected in New Zealand. Right, so how do you, how do you guys work at Accent? Someone um, from overseas wants to move to New Zealand. What's the first step with regards to reaching out to you? What can you provide? Sure. Well, the first thing we need to do is have a look at your resume or your CV. And if you would like a sample CV, we can send you a sample CV today. So email info at admin.net.nz and we'll send you a CV. Maybe one of uh, Kristen or Haley could type in info at admin into the chat okay. or the notes. Um, we want to see your CV. We want to know that you're from a comparable health system and your skills will be in demand in New Zealand. So we want to have a look at your CV, do reference checks, get some forms filled in, copies of ID, and then we get you into the registration process. Now, the New Zealand registration process, whether you're a physio, a nurse, a midwife, a radiographer, regardless of what you are, you will need to go through quite a process with getting your documents identified with nurses at CGNFS, with doctors, it's EPIC, and we have to go through quite a process. It's probably three quarters of the processes to get your professional registration. Having said that, it's doable. Everyone can get their registration in New Zealand as long as you've had the comparable training. So get your registration in New Zealand, we've got your CV, we've got your references, and we consider you recruitment ready. So we will present your application for a job in the location and the specialty that you like and have experience in and motivated to work in and organize an interview. 
We then organise interview training for you with the um, appropriate recruiter. Uh, we've got a team of five out here. Once you have your interview training, we go through Maori culture, New Zealand health system, questions, etc. Then we get you a job interview, and that's usually by Zoom or Skype. Okay, fantastic. Hey, um, we've got today's. We've got some GPs from the US. Um, what have we got? We've got physios from South Africa, geriatric nurses from Belgium, uh, physicians, Singapore, all over the world, really. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing there's a different registration body in New Zealand for each of these occupations, isn't there? Yeah. So the New Zealand Medical Council requires most often a job offer first. All the other occupations require registration before a job offer. Um, anesthetic technicians, for example, or ODPs, the process takes about three weeks to get registered. Nurses, more like three to six months. Physios, three to six months. Doctors take about a month. So it depends on how quickly your referees will respond, how quickly you can get the documents from the place that you trained. So we'll need a transcript of your training. We'll need references. We'll need verification from your registration body. So there's quite a lot involved, but depending on your occupation, we can send you a step-by-step um, -step process. And of course, we're free, the employer pays us, but we can send you a step-by-step -step process on what to do for your registration. Great. So get in touch with Axon, essentially find out what registration body um, deals with your um, specific occupation and yep. then work with Axon towards um, gathering the documentation. Charlotte, is that sort of um, the same process from the immigration side? Uh, would you recommend that people reach out to an advisor, so New Zealand Shores, obviously, and start working on the other documentation in parallel with registration? I would generally recommend so. Um, there are obviously a few countries which it can be difficult to gain registration for. So if you're in that boat and it could go either way, um, Prudence would be able to you know, tell you whether you are from one of those countries. Based on what I've seen in the chat, no one here really appears to be <laughs> from one of those places at the moment. But because registration can take a while, um, it is a good opportunity to also be working on your immigration documents as well. Depending what country you're from, some things can take a while to obtain. Um, things like police clearance certificates, um, depending on which country you're from, they can take up to three months to get. So, um, and it is a mandatory document for a application once you're onshore in New Zealand. So if you have all of that in place before a job offer is received, you know that as soon as that job offer comes through, you're good to go. We can get that visa application um, underway immediately. Obviously, if you don't um, get all of your documentation ready first, there will be a little bit of a delay between you know, us advising on what you need document-wise and actually being able to submit a visa. So um, most New Zealand employers want to see you here as soon as you possibly can be. So if there's you know, not a whole lot of um, downtime between getting the job offer and applying for the visa, it's going to make everything happen so much quicker to actually get you here into New Zealand. All right, thank you. So um, obviously, well, obviously a lot of people probably know that um, there are severe restrictions at the border in New Zealand. However, the good news is that the vast majority of health professionals do qualify for border exemptions. Um, and in many cases, even for priority allocation to, to management isolation and quarantine. I'm gonna share a screen there, which sort of outlines the process from an immigration perspective. If um, Charlotte, you would please run everyone through this. So we're gonna be talking about the border restrictions. Uh, the critical purpose visa and the longer term visa pathways. Cool. Um, Prudence, this slide's probably more for you than me. <laughs> sure. So occupational registration, obviously you cannot work in New Zealand without being registered here. And that process, as I said, takes a few months. You can get registered now if you're not thinking about coming for three or four years. I would still get registered now. As I said, the process can take a few months. If you get your registration, you will be so much more attractive to employers. You're unlikely to secure an interview for a job offer unless you have your registration. So, and we don't usually proceed until you have your registration. We're happy to chat to you um, and set up a one-on-one -on -one chat. With regards to documentation for your registration, you need a transcript of your training, 
you need verification from your uh, board that you're licensed with. You'll need references, CV, with your, obviously with your career history. You'll need um, identification documentation, um, similar information that you'll need for registration, uh, sorry, for, for, for your immigration. So that's why Charlotte and I work hand in hand together. Our job search strategies are very tried and tested. As I said, we've been recruiting for 24 years. So we, for example, if you're a GP that wants to work in the North Island, not a large city, we absolutely find the right place for you as far as um, location, clinic size, the right support, the right specialties. If you're a registered nurse who wants to work in... Um, the, in, a, in a city and operating theatres, absolutely. Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, perhaps Hamilton, um, Tauranga. So we'll find, we find out about you, your family, if you're travelling with anyone, if you're bringing pets and what's important for you. Um, and we make sure that we've got uh, everything in place to have the right job search strategies. Right, thank you, Prudence. Um, I'll pass things over to Charlotte now for the visa process, but we'll touch base on this a bit later. Where are the job opportunities in New Zealand? Thanks, Prudence. Where the job opportunities are? Um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. Um, oh, okay. I'd like to go That's... through the visa process now. Sure. Awesome. So um, thanks for that, Prudence. You cover that off a whole lot better than I do, that's for sure. Um, right. So as Fabian has mentioned, the New Zealand border is highly restricted. Uh, the benefit for everyone in this group is that it basically doesn't apply to you. Um, what it does do is even though you can gain entry, the process to actually get entry to New Zealand is a little bit more um, technical than it was pre-COVID. Um, so effectively, we are looking at a four-step process to get you into New Zealand. Um, the first step is a skilled job offer, um, so Accent will be able to help you with that. Once you've got that job offer, that is what then allows us to apply for what's called an expression of interest, um, or EOI, as we have it listed here. Um, that is a border exemption request. Uh, we make that on the basis of you having a skilled job offer as a healthcare professional. At the moment, they're taking roughly 24 hours uh, for us to get a response back. And immigration will then issue you what's called an invitation to apply. So there's a lot of um, jargon <laughs> surrounding all of these visas and the processes and the applications at the moment, but you'll get your head around it eventually. Um, an invitation to apply gives us a special number. That special number then allows us to apply for the critical purpose visitor visa. That critical purpose visitor visa, or um, you'll probably see Accent and New Zealand Shores use CPVV as an acronym. That is the visa that allows you to enter New Zealand despite the border being restricted. So without that, you cannot travel to New Zealand. It's absolutely crucial. Um, it is a visitor visa, so it does give work rights to the principal applicant or the person with the job offer. It doesn't give any additional rights to your family. So if you have partner or children traveling with you, they are basically in New Zealand on a holiday until um, we apply for what I'm kind of calling at the moment your real visas. So these are visas which um, would allow your partner to work and your children to attend school. Um, school being primary, secondary and early childhood education. Uh, tertiary study is a whole other ball game. So if you're in that situation, we can chat that through. But um, yeah, so we can't apply for um, the the work visas and the student visas until you're actually onshore in New Zealand, which is why that process looks the way it does at the moment. Um, once you're in New Zealand, you have to enter into managed isolation or quarantine, um, which is what MIQ is. Um, Prudence and Accent are absolute superstars at getting that process sorted for you. So that's another thing I'll let her chat through because she has um, a lot more experience in that area than I do. Right, because um, at the moment for normal allocation for um, MIQ, you're looking at, I mean, we're all in August now, I believe there's no spaces until October, but who knows, you've had um, some really good success with prioritizing um, allocation for, for those health professionals that we're bringing in. Yeah, um, we've been working very hard on a process to streamline the application for the managed isolation and quarantine. Um, please note that you go into a four or five star hotel. The majority of people have access to outside 
either on a timetable or when they want to go outside. Some people have permanent uh, a, port, a port, port patio or a, uh, a car park they can go to any time, day or night, which is really, really nice. Um, but a lot of people have timetabled walking times. I know isolation in Singapore and Australia is in your room for 14 days. Um, so it's a four or five star hotel. The process to get a special managed isolation is pretty complicated, but we've got it down pat and we've got sort of a five step process where you have to email a um, particular contact we're at a managed isolation with your job offer, your visa, your flights, a covering letter from the hospital. Um, there's a list that we send through to MIQ saying this is how you get in um, and you're allocated that 14 days before travel. Uh, so look, it's not too difficult. And so far we haven't had any health professional um, in recent times denied in an isolation spot. And that's OTs, physios, nurses, midwives, doctors, GPs. So you can get in. Um, if you look online, it's closed off to the general public. And look, this is like the COVID virus. It's mutating. The process is changing. Right. Thank you, um, Prudence. So, Charlotte, um, you were mentioning earlier that the, the critical purpose visa, its sole purpose is really to bring you over here. Um, in New Zealand with your family, um, the family can be included in that visa and allows the principal applicant to take up employment. How long does that visa uh, is, um, how long is it typically granted for and what are the different kinds of visas you can apply for once onshore? Yeah, so that critical purpose visitor visa is issued for either six or 12 months. Um, I see a variety of outcomes from immigration on that front. We can provide the exact same documentation for two doctors, for example, and one will get a six month and one will get a 12 month. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter too much because our plan at New Zealand Shores, if you are our clients, is to have your next visa applications drafted before you even arrive into New Zealand. We set ourselves a reminder the day you're on shore, um, or if you know you arrive at a weekend, the Monday, following Monday, we will get those next visa applications submitted. Um, the critical purpose visitor visa at the moment is taking probably two or three weeks to process. Um, and then yeah, so you will have to wait for that before you can travel anyway. Um, once you're onshore, at the moment, there are two different types of work visas you can apply for. And just keep in mind, um, your partner will be able to apply for a partnership work visa and children up to the age of 19 can apply for um, student visas to attend school. Um, so yeah, the process for partners and children remains the same, irrespective of which of these two visas we apply for. So at the moment, there's what's called an essential skills work visa or there's talent work visas um, and those have been broken off into what's called the long-term skill shortage list or LTSSL um, or accredited employers. So I keep saying at the moment because um, that talent work visa category is meant to no longer exist from the 30, well, last day you can submit an application is 31st of October. So from 1st of November, they'll no longer be available. Bear in mind that could change. Immigration could come out and say they're extending it, um, but that's the information we have at present. Um, so once that drops away, there will only be what's called the essential skills work visa. Um, main difference with the two visa types, um, talent work visas generally require a little bit less information from your employer. Um, documentation you provide is exactly the same. So you're still looking at passports, police clearances, medical certificates, um, which are done by approved panel physicians for Immigration New Zealand, uh, work experience evidence registration. If you have a partner, evidence that you're living together in a genuine and stable relationship. Um, so yeah, the, on you, it's basically the same for the employer. What they provide is a little bit different. Um, that essential skills work visa will also potentially drop away in the middle of 2022. And there will only then be one type of work visa you can apply for, which will be called an accredited employer work visa. Um, that was due to come into effect on the 1st of November, but has been now pushed out to mid 2022. Um, whether it's pushed out again or not, we don't know. So <laughs> it's all a bit of a guessing game on that front. But ultimately the work visa you apply for 
there will always be one. Um, it just may have a different name. Um, and the documents you provide will always be the same. It's just things may look different for your employer. So that's the main um, difference. So right. um, I'll jump in here for a second. Um, for, for those um, viewers um, who've been following us on social media and maybe registered to our newsletters, um, you, you, you would be aware that some major changes are underway for um, the temporary visa, work visa categories. These don't really have any effect on the person applying for the visa. Uh, the changes will largely be um, relating to the documentation or the, the different steps that the New Zealand employer needs to take before they hire a migrant. So like Charlotte said, regardless of the visa you're applying for once you land in New Zealand, um, health professionals are sort of pick of the crop. Um, they, they tend to be prioritized and, and the process is a little smoother than for most other occupation. So that's the temporary visa um, pathway here. Once um, you're land in New Zealand on your critical, critical purpose visa, you apply for the normal or the real work visa, Charlotte tagged it. And then what are the residence pathways, Charlotte? Yeah, so then we have two different residence pathways. So this green one, which we've got labelled as talent residence, which then you see the same LTSSL or long-term skill shortage list um, occupations or accredited employers. So if you apply for one of those talent and work visas before the 1st of November, you will then have this pathway called work to residence or talent to residence. Um, basically, it means you work in New Zealand or can work in New Zealand for up to 24 months and then apply for residence after that 24 month um, time frame. However, everyone in this webinar as a skilled health worker, you will also be eligible to apply under the skilled migrant residence category. Um, the bonus to the skilled migrant residence category is there's no waiting period so you don't have to work in New Zealand for a certain amount of time um, before you can apply so theoretically you could start that process um, either what, while you're offshore and you've got a job offer or once you arrive into New Zealand. Um, the For most people that work to residence is beneficial for people who are not eligible under the skilled migrant residence category but like I said that's not going to be anyone in this group we're talking to. Um, the moment and some of you may have read in the media um, that so the skilled migrant residence category is a two-part process. The first step is what's called an expression of interest or EOI. That's different to the EOI for your critical purpose visitor visa, so same name, different application form. Um, the EOI for skilled migrant residence uh, application, it's an online form. We fill in details about who you are, your skilled employment in New Zealand, registration, work experience, etc. Get submitted into a pool. Immigration pre-COVID, we're making selections every two weeks and inviting people to apply for residence. That selection process is on hold at the moment and um, has been since April 2020. We have been told that there will be um, an announcement in the next, the same soon. <laughs> what that means, we don't know. They have said it won't be months, so hopefully it's only weeks. Um, but there is a lot, um, a lot of chat at the moment, particularly around healthcare workers and how it's really important for you all to get residents in New Zealand so we can, you know, can ensure there are adequate staffing levels and we're not having, you know, really skilled people such as yourselves turning around and going back to your home country. So I think, and this is my opinion, irrespective of how they um, resume those EOI selections, healthcare workers will be some of the ones that get first priority. Um, so I'll Ultimately, there isn't too much for you to worry about on that front. Right, I agree. Not only that, but um, once you have been able to put in a residence application, um, there are two different queues, right, Charlotte? Mm -hmm. um, there's a normal queue and the prioritized queue. If you're in the normal queue at the moment, the time for someone to pick up your file at immigration is around the 18 to 24 months mark. Yeah. But as a health professional holding occupational registration, whether you're a physiotherapist, a dentist, um, a registered nurse, a GP, you have occupational registration and that warrants prioritization of your residence application. So once the EOI reopens and your residence application has been put through to Immigration New Zealand, you can expect a case officer to look at your application within a month. That's, um, there's virtually no queue um, for, for this. Um, 
I'd like to have a, a chat about um, the age limit. Um, it's a question we get a lot, obviously, throughout all webinars, health professionals or not. Is there a health limit to, sorry, an age limit to move to New Zealand, Charlotte, from an immigration perspective? Is there a cutoff? Yeah, so uh, technically the cutoff date for applying for residence is up until the day you turn 56. However, apparently, um, and it's not a process we've gone through, but Accent has been um, through it with a number of their doctors who are over that um, at 56 age limit. We can apply for what's called a um, basically a special request to the immigration minister that even though you are above that age threshold, you are a person who is providing such um, positive benefits to New Zealand that they will still allow you to apply for residence. Um, it is a process that we are about to go through with a couple of doctors who are in that queue waiting to apply. Um, so yeah, I guess watch this space, but Accent has seen it happen. Um, so it's just, I guess, a case of putting in the application. And in terms of job prospects prudence, um, being 50 as opposed to 35 as a GP or registered nurse, does it make a difference on the job market and, and on your prospects if you intend to move to New Zealand? No, not at all. Um, it, you know, we're not particularly ageist in New Zealand. As long as you're fit and well, you'll bring amazing skills to New Zealand. Um, you need to work a minimum of 30 hours per week, um, but there's no cutoff for age, really, as long as you're fit and well and able to work. Right, fantastic. I see a few questions in the chat. Just a reminder, if you could put your questions in the Q&A rather than the chat, it's a bit easier to keep track and we can answer them live or um, the team at Accent can type in the answers there for everyone's benefit. Um, question from Robert um, there, can we apply straight away for residence while, once we are in New Zealand? So as, um, as Charlotte touched on, yes, you can. Um, as a matter of fact, you can apply from offshore um, even while you're going through the board exemption process, as long as you've secured employment. However, the selection for residents is on hold at the moment. So you'll be, you'll be in that queue for the expression of interest until the government decides to reopen it. Let's turn to recruitment specifically. Um, so that's definitely um, your game there, Prudence. What do New Zealand employers look for in a CV? I do, I do know you assist with CV rewriting and New Zealand Shores does too. So that yep. gives our clients and your clients uh, a few examples to work off. Um, some formats we know New Zealand employers respond well to, but what should I put in my CV to have it, you know, to grab a potential employer's attention? Yeah, that, that's a really good question and often asked. We can send you a sample CV depending on your occupation. We've got doctor's CV, physio CV, nurse, midwife, etc. Um, I personally like to see a photo because you're coming from overseas and, you know, it, more than black and white. We're, with our sample, we'll send you, uh, you know, a little bit about notes that you can follow. What's your motivation to come to New Zealand? A skills list, for example. Can you intubate? Do you do venipuncture? Um, what's your CPR status? Is that up to date? Do you advance life support? Can you uh, put in a nasogastric, a cannula? It, no matter what it is, pop it down and we'll tell you whether it's too much or too little. Even a page of skills is really good because a nurse from Singapore versus England versus America will have quite different skills. Um, we want to know if you work with ventilators. Do you do... Um, uh, at calming and restraint and mental health? Do you do seating wheelchair and occupational therapy? As a physiotherapist, what are your specific skills? Um, we'll also want to know about the hospital. You know, if it's um, Smithtown Hospital, um, uh, High Street Chicago or whatever, we want to know a little bit about it. How many beds? What's the population um, present with? Do you have a specific list of um, common admissions that you deal with yourselves. So that's really, really important. Um, so a description of your um, hospital is really important, a list of your skills, and also um, if there's any gaps in your CV, what were you doing? Um, were you, um, as my uh, son told me a joke recently, were you at Yale or were you in jail? So yeah, really important to what were you doing in those two or three years off? Um, also have a little bit of information about your referees. So your referee is, um, is Joe Bloggs. You've worked with them for six years, most recently up until March. 
um, they were your supervisor, their email address, their home email address, their, their Skype details, their, I will, if, if, if requested, have that handy because sometimes people like to do video references. Also their mobile number so they can be contacted. And what was your professional relationship with them? Were they your manager? Were they your peer? So really important to have as much information as possible because if you've got a... Um, a CV in front of you as an employer, you want to know the process is going to be easy enough. Um, the process is slowed down slightly by COVID and managed quarantine. And some people believe that it's too hard to get someone in from overseas, but it's actually not. We've had we've got three people starting work today who have went through isolation. One person actually finished isolation on Friday. So starting work on Monday, which is pretty brave. Um, but other people are taking about 10 days after isolation. But as far as CVs could go, keep it in a word format, um, keep it bullet pointed. We like to see five or six pages, depending on your experience. Um, and if you want to have a look at the CVs and us to send you a free CV sample in a word format that you can model your CV on, as I've said, email at info at accent.net.nz and pop that in the um, Q&A. Great, thank you, um, Prudence. Yes, um, just a reminder that as part of this webinar, Axon um, can provide a CV template and New Zealand Tours will provide um, an eligibility assessment, a personalized eligibility report for migration to New Zealand. So if you haven't yet sent your current CV um, to us, um, send that um, to health at newzealandtours.com. Uh, but again, I'll be in touch with um, every registrant um, later in the week. So the CV, the main purpose is really to grab the prospective employer's attention um, and secure an interview. Does Accent help with the interview process as well? What, what really do you need to work on? Absolutely. We can send you, if you want to have a look at the interview process, email me again. I might not get back to you today, but I should do, to info at accent.net.nz. And I can send you a YouTube tutorial on interviews. Um, interviews will last between 20 minutes and two hours. So be prepared for the extremes. They will be informal, a chat like this, tell me a bit about yourself, why do you want to come to New Zealand, right through to very formal clinical questions. Um, some of the questions you're going to be asked will be competency-based questions, Tell me about a time you made a difference to a patient. Tell me about a time you were involved with a disciplinary action with a colleague. Tell me about a time you um, had some uh, innovation in your practice. Tell me about a time you made a mistake. And that's really, really important because everyone has made a mistake at some stage in their career. Whether it's turning up to the wrong shift or, um, you know, admitting a patient under a different name or you know everyone's possibly hopefully not uh not killed anyone but made a small mistake so um that's a really important question um also they want to know why you're coming to New Zealand and we go through this with the interview training and as I said we can send you some information on the whole process of interviews we've got a list of about 60 interview questions that you may potentially be asked um if you're going for a clinical role, for example, in orthopedics, they might ask, in your country, how do you deal with an open fracture? What are the signs of infection? How do you deal with a patient that's deteriorating? Which is really important. Um, if you're going into general practice, they would, a very common question is, how do you deal with a patient who wants more time that you can offer? You know, how do you deal with time management? Um, and a really big question is, tell me about yourself. That's a really popular one. Um, and that's you want to get that right and use the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time talking about your work, 20% um, talking about um, yourself as a person. So the interview process does vary depending on the um, interviewer and depending on if they've interviewed from overseas before. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, we're all pretty happy with Zoom and we're very happy to... Uh, talk to people over screens. So that's kind of very small silver lining, um, but it means that you'll, you'll be comfortable in a Zoom interview. And we do a lot of practice with you as well. 
Right, fantastic. Thank you, Prudence. So um, early on, we touched on job opportunities in New Zealand. What's in really high demand at the moment, Prudence, and where in New Zealand are those jobs located? Yeah, um, throughout New Zealand. So this is sign language for the north for New Zealand. So that's North and South Island. So we've got jobs: Whangarei, Auckland, Wellington, Taranaki, Gisborne, Hawke's Bay, Palmerston North, Nelson, Blenheim, the West Coast, uh, Canterbury, down to Dunedin and Southland. So there's jobs all throughout New Zealand, which is uh, very positive. The occupations most in demand, um, we haven't got time to probably run through all of them, but GPs, anaesthetists, um, general surgeons, uh, orthopaedic, anaesthetic technicians or ODPs, midwives, registered nurses, probably surgical more than medical, intensive care, emergency, mental health, sonographers, occupational therapists and physiotherapists, radiographers, and if I've gotten everything, Kristen and Hayley can back me up. Um, just to let you know, Kristen's been working with me for nearly 15 years and Hayley four years. Hayley's an ex-nurse as well. So look, we've got a lot of experience dealing with um, people coming from all sorts of countries. And um, I see a question there, uh, which we haven't touched on yet. Um, wages, salaries, um, are these, what are you looking at? Um, there has been a lot of publicity um, in the news regarding immigration here about the salary thresholds um, changing while well, increasing to qualify for a visa. Yeah. So um, what can people moving to New Zealand, what can expect, uh, what can they expect? Is that going to be sufficient to qualify for a visa? Um, is that going to be comparable to say the UK or the US, for example, as, a, as an RN? Yeah, look, it's really, it's a very difficult science to discuss the salary and the cost of living. Um, if you went and worked in the Middle East, for example, and conditions over there, you would probably get more money. Some parts of Australia you get more money, but in New Zealand, the lifestyle and the cost of living is a lot lower. So um, the salary is, is quite comparable to overseas, especially people um, in the United Kingdom. And the... Um, the shift work is still available as well, and we're going through a round of negotiations at the moment to increase the wages. But yes, the salary wage, salary is high enough to uh, get your visas and residency. Okay, fantastic. All right, um, so we have um, 15, 20 minutes to go. I'd like to go through some um, frequently asked questions, um, some FAQ, and we'll start with um, things that are immigration related. So turning over to you, Charlotte. Obviously, a key question, what is the advantage of using New Zealand Shores or a licensed advisor as opposed to navigating through the immigration process yourself? Yeah, um, the advantage to using us is you know that your visa application is going to be completed 99.9999% accurate. Um, obviously, the information in the application we submit is as good as what you provide to us. So ultimately, there are, of course, times when immigration request more information but um, for the most part you know that it's just going to be plain sailing through that process. Um, things are changing too quite rapidly at the moment um, with you know who who's, what kind of family members can get border exemptions if you don't travel together. Um, that changed we're seeing probably more changes you know in the next six to 12 months about what will happen with MIQ will that border exemption request process still be in place um, MIQ is changing constantly and it's saying across that so well at the moment I mean we're going to them and asking questions because we know they've got that much um, more experience but you know we've we've seen it all um, we have seen you know the most clear-cut visa applications to the absolute messiest and we can provide our knowledge and expertise across no matter what um, your situation is with you and your family uh, where your job offer is do we have to apply for things like medical waivers or health uh, sorry or character waivers um, for you or one of your family members so we have that knowledge um, we can look at your situation and say yes you're going to get a visa no you won't um, weird and wonderful things pop up during the visa processing um, stage, which sometimes they do, you know, we can advise you in layman's terms on what to provide. We take care of responses to immigration, you know, on all of those matters for you. So it's just about 
making sure that your application is prepared correctly. Um, we mitigate any issues from the outset. Um, yeah, it's just, I guess, a holding hand through that process, really. Um, some people, well and truly, you could do it yourselves, but you know, when you've got a hundred other things going on between trying to sell a house, pack up your life, um, move country, deal with going into managed isolation with you and your children, um, knowing that the visa process is taken care of and it's just one last less thing to worry about, sometimes it's just the peace of mind that people need. Right, and it's not only um, as you go through the process, it's all the questions that pop in your mind prior and all the research that would be involved in trying to find answers to these. Um, a question we get a lot, and we get this from Denise today, um, how long would it take to qualify for state benefits? Um, and Denise is referring to um, public funded healthcare, which coming from certain countries is a completely new concept here. Um, it doesn't take long at all. What triggers um, the cover for a migrant to, um, to, to claim public funded healthcare is the duration of your visa. So although you're not eligible for um, free treatment as you land in New Zealand on your critical purpose visa, as soon as your real visas are approved, you, you do qualify for public funded healthcare. And what triggers this is the 24 months at least, so 24 or more, um, duration of your visas. So that means um, if you if you fall ill, you can be seen at any um, hospital, for example, or go to the GP and pay a nominal fee the same a New Zealander would. Um, any accident for everyone is covered under um, a system that we have that's called ACC. So that's even beyond public funded healthcare that covers everyone, including visitors. Um, money is obviously a big um, question, do you, do you need a certain amount of money per person saved up or in your account, um, Charlotte, before you can apply for the visa or before you come? Mm. Immigration doesn't look at how much money is in your bank account. Um, they use your job offer as evidence that you're able to support yourself in New Zealand. Ultimately, though, I mean, when you're moving country, I'm sure there isn't um, a set number of, you know, funds that are going to be enough more money you have saved I guess the easier that transition is going to be um, you're going to have to do things like pay a bond so when you rent a property in New Zealand you have to pay the first four weeks of rent up front and that's your bond against that property you may need to purchase a vehicle um, you know buy furniture and things so as much <clears throat> as you can possibly save and bring with you is going to help um, thank you, Charlotte. Um, question about um, partnership relationship. Is there a requirement to be legally married in order to include your partner in an application? So you don't have to be legally married. Um, immigration doesn't look at marriage so much. I mean, yes, it builds up part of your evidence, but it's not the main factor as it is in some countries. What Immigration New Zealand look at is are you in a genuine and stable relationship. So um, in order to demonstrate that, we provide evidence that shows you're living at the same address. Um, and that's generally documents which come from a third party um, that have your name and address on them. Um, bank statements, utility bills, insurance documents, um, online shopping invoices. I think everyone in the last 18 months has been doing a lot more online shopping. So you should at least be able to provide that. Um, they will look to see whether your family support your relationship. So can you get letters from friends and family to confirm that, yes, we know you're in a genuine relationship. Um, these are 10 great things we can say about this couple. Um, do you have photos together that obviously don't look staged? Um, trust me, we've seen it all. Um, there, yeah, it's, it's creating a picture really to show that you are in that genuine and stable relationship. Um, being married and having children doesn't demonstrate that on its own. So, and that's one thing that actually a lot of people get caught up with. Um, we send out document and documentation instructions, which outline all of these things that we require to build that picture. And if I had a dollar for every time someone came back and said to me, but I'm married and we have two children, um, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So <laughs> trust me, it's not just that that you need to prove. Mm. Thank you, um, Charlotte. Another question about partnership employment. I can probably answer that one. If I come over as a critical worker and my husband comes with me, can he get an open visa straight away? Um, so he cannot commence work as soon as you, you guys land here as a family, 
But um, as Charlotte touched on earlier, it's in your best interest to work with someone like New Zealand Shore so we can have everything ready so that the day you land in New Zealand, we put through your visa applications, they're approved as quickly as possible. And then once you've got your longer term temporary visas, um, you have a work visa and your partner has an open work visa so you can pick up employment as quickly as possible. Um, great, let's have a look at other questions we got here. Um, that one's probably for our prudence. Does New Zealand accept registered nurses that have worked primarily out of hospitals, but in long-term care disabilities or correctional health care, for example? Yeah, yeah, that's a, a common question as well. We recruit for the hospitals and also the community. So long-term residential care, health care of the elderly, general practice, um, nine to five type jobs tend to go to New Zealanders. So clinic jobs, outpatients. So be flexible to do shifts, um, but there is work in healthcare of the elderly. Um, also Fabian, just with regards to partners and jobs for partners, whether they're engineers or IT or labouring or sales, either you or I, uh, NZ Shores or Accent, can network the partner with um, potential agencies who may be able to help as well. Mm. So whilst we specialise in health recruitment only for New Zealand, um, we can always give advice to the partner. Yeah, for sure. And look, as a matter of fact, New Zealand Shores over the years has built relationship with literally hundreds of employers across a wide range of industries. And we have employers calling us on a daily basis asking for carpenters, um, asking for engineers, any sort of occupation. So if you, if you get it, if you get here in New Zealand um, as a registered worker, we can then potentially assess with your partner's employment. Um, so we've touched on the age limit, again, to confirm no age limit for temporary work visas. Um, one matter that's of concern to a lot of migrants is um, as, a, as a second step, getting their parents over once they've successfully migrated. Um, Charlotte, can you tell us a few things about the different parent categories or ways to get your parents over once you've successfully moved to New Zealand? Yeah, I was actually just about to answer a question in the chat about that. Um, so this is probably a bit easier. Um, it, yes, there are ways for your parents to come over. There are two categories. There is what's called the parent retirement category, which is an investment based uh, visa. These are still processing. Um, they do require an investment of, um, and this is all in New Zealand dollars. So $1 million investment funds, 500,000 settlement funds and a guaranteed annual income of 60,000 per year. Um, that guaranteed income can come from things such as um, shares, uh, sorry, <laughs> dividends, um, profits from shares. You know, if you, they've got a company still running, it could be self-employment, um, pensions, et cetera. So that we can still submit those applications at present and they are still processing. Um, we've got quite a few people that we're working through that with at the moment. There is also what's called the parent category. Um, this isn't investment based. This is based on what you as the child um, and potentially your partner earns in New Zealand. Um, immigration changed the policy around that. Oh, goodness, I think I almost two years ago now, um, we were supposed to have, so that's also an EOI, so that's another expression of interest yet again under a different category. Um, also, there were selections for that which were supposed to happen yearly. Um, those were supposed to resume in May last year. Obviously, with COVID, um, that has been put on hold, uh, so that is another expression of interest that we're waiting for them to resume selections on. Um, it does come down to how much you earn and um, you have to have first been a resident um, in New Zealand for at least three years before you can sponsor your parent under that category and how much money you need to earn actually depends on are you bringing one parent, two parents, three parents, four parents so you know it could be you and your partner are wanting to bring both sets of parents out or it could just be you have um, one parent each or whatever the situation is but um, obviously you know the more parents you want to join you in New Zealand the more money you need to earn um, because the idea is that you are ultimately supporting them um, so yeah it is it's a bit of a tricky thing to advise on um, especially that parent category in particular because like I said you need to be a resident for three years and what that policy looks like in three years time I don't know um, 
in all honesty, it'll probably change again. Um, I think already our current government is talking about reassessing that policy. And then if we get a different government to come into place, no doubt they'll look at it again. So it's really, if your parents don't fall under that parent um, retirement investment based visa, it's really a case of we'd have to look at that policy um, closer to the time of you being eligible to sponsor. Thank you, Charlotte. Very thorough answer. Complete change of topic, but this is actually a very, very good question, which we get very often. Um, when people start browsing for jobs um, on, on portals in New Zealand, they will almost always see that you need to be a New Zealand resident or have the right to work in New Zealand, which deters a lot of international workers applying from offshore from applying. What's what's the thing with that sentence at the bottom of those ads, Charlotte? Can you tell us a, a few things about it? Yeah, um, Prudence will probably have follow up to this, but in our experience, it's quite often um, the person posting the job doesn't actually know what they're writing. It could just be that's the template they've used um, and they've never ever changed it. Once again, if I had a dollar for every time one of my clients got a job offer from an ad that stated you must have the right to work in New Zealand, I also wouldn't be sitting here today. I'd probably be a millionaire. Um, so yeah, it's not, if you see that, I would still apply. Um, but yeah, Prudence, I'll let you jump in there as well. Yeah, that, uh, before you, you get onto this, Prudence, that's why we would absolutely recommend that you work with Accent for recruitment because they know, yeah, they know the requirement, they know the ins and outs, they know what the good jobs are, what the genuine employers are. Um, over to you, Accent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you will see a lot of jobs advertised and um, they do say you need a visa first, but we educate the employers and you're best just to deal with one agency. And we actually have a policy that we just work exclusively with you. So you are a priority to us. If you're working with loads of different agencies or contacting employers directly, it does tend to dilute your application significantly. And also, if you apply to jobs directly with hospitals, they won't treat you as a priority either because you're better to work with an agency who's based in New Zealand. Um, and as I said, we don't charge, we don't contract you to us. Um, we just have a handshake agreement that we'll work with you as a priority. And if you're coming in the next six months, and you're registered, and you're reference checked, you are absolutely at the top of our whiteboard, we say. So we have a list of about 40 people we work with at one stage, each of us. Um, and you do need to work with one recruitment agency. And also, a lot of employers will, um, not that I want to say that they're ignorant, but they won't know the process, they're ignorant as far as getting you into managed isolation. We will also help and make sure that you will get managed isolation and we will encourage the employers to pay for it. <clears throat> it costs $3,100 for one person, $950 for the second, a child is $450. So we get employers to pay for it where they can, um, and that's a really big bonus. For sure, because um, I mean, for, for an employer to consider an application from offshore is, is quite a commitment. So they need to have absolute confidence that the candidate that's being referred or that's applying um, for the job is going to be the right one. And yeah. you at Axon can definitely bring that confidence, right? Yeah, absolutely. And we um, use up your CV, we profile it, we make sure you've got references and are registered, and we will put in front of the employer the best case of you, the best version of you to get that job interview. And we can also reassure, reassure the employer that you will be here on time because they get let down with a lot of people from overseas who aren't able to sell their house. They're not able to transfer funds. They're not able to get registration or get references to get here in a timely manner. And look, we work with people who are coming to New Zealand as far away as to, you know, 2028. We'll start chatting to you now. We do like to know that you're coming in the next six months and we'll start interviewing process. Um, but even if you're coming in the next six or seven years, it's great to start the process. Just get on our database, get our free monthly newsletter and, um, you know, join, join in and um, start the process of educating yourself about New Zealand. 
I guess what Axon does in, in a way um, in the recruitment sphere, presenting a candidate in the best possible light is what we do at New Zealand Shores as well. And when we submit a visa application, isn't it, um, Charlotte? We refer to immigration policy. We demonstrate to the case officer how policy is met and how a visa should be granted. We just have a few minutes to go. Um, Charlotte, I just want to pick your brain on other requirements for a visa application, character and health, are there some minimum standards to meet in those two um, spheres? Yeah, absolutely. So as part of a visa application, and these two things are submitted when you're applying for your visas onshore, so those work visas, student visas, everyone has to undergo an Immigration New Zealand medical. Uh, children under the age of 11 don't do chest x-rays or blood tests. Uh, children 11 years and older will, will do a chest x-ray. And I, sorry, from ages 11 to 15, you do the general medical and the chest x-ray. From um, once you're 15, you're basically classed as an adult in that situation. So you do the general medical, which includes blood and urine tests uh, and the chest x-ray. And um, so absolutely everyone has to provide those. Everyone has to meet basically a certain standard of health. Um, the threshold that Immigration New Zealand set generally is that if you have a condition which is going to cost the New Zealand health system more than $41,000 over the course of five years, then you're not automatically eligible for a visa on that basis. Um, in some instances, we can apply for what's called a health waiver. So that's basically taking into account um, what your future prognosis is, what the condition is, and the ultimate overall benefit that you will have to New Zealand. So there's a lot of people in this group that even if you have um, a health condition that may cost the New Zealand government, you know, you, it might be 41,500, let's say, you know, and you may be just over that, but because you are a nurse or a doctor or a physiotherapist or whatever it may be, um, Immigration New Zealand will look at it and say, all right, you're going to be of strong benefit to New Zealand, therefore we can waive that health requirement. Um, there are obviously some more serious health concerns, which no matter how much information we provide to Immigration New Zealand, you're not going to get a visa. Um, but it really is big stuff. You know, it's not minor things. Um, things like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, you know, if you've been on antidepressants, if it's just stuff that's kind of run of the mill everyday life um, things, it's not going to be an issue. If you have a medical condition, which you think may be an issue, um, please email us because we can look at it and say, even though we're not doctors, obviously, um, through our experience, we can look at it and say, yes, you're probably going to be okay, or no, this may be of concern. Um, we can't ever give you a 100% answer because, like I said, we're not doctors. Um, your medicals are assessed by a team of doctors. If, um, you know, there is anything that's flagged on your medical, it does actually go to a team of panel physicians who assess that. Um, and they will be the ones that, if they need to, they'll request more information, and they will be the ones that will assess those health waiver requests. On the character front, um, yes, you have to provide police clearance certificates. Obviously, once again, there are things which, you know, if you have a parking ticket, it's not going to be an issue. If you have the odd, you know, if you have a drink driving charge from 20 years ago when you're 18 years old, it's not going to be an issue. Um, if you have a charge for manslaughter or murder, yes, probably, but then I would say you wouldn't be in this group anyway, because likely you wouldn't be practicing medicine. So um, yeah, there, there are small things that will trigger the need for a character waiver, even drink driving charges from 20 years ago. Um, you know, sometimes people get up to silly stuff in their teenage years, which does then come back to haunt them. And we do have to go through a process of providing additional information, but ultimately it's not too difficult. So um, yeah, really, as long as you haven't done anything really serious and served jail time, you're going to be okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Charlotte. All right, well, this concludes our webinar for health professionals. Um, just a few words from either of you on the next step to take for people who want to move to New Zealand. Charlotte first, and then we'll um, conclude with Prudence. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, New Zealand Shores has an email address, which is health at newzealandshores.com. Um, all of those emails come directly to me. So uh, please inundate my email, uh, inbox. Um, if you're interested in a free eligibility assessment, uh, please send through your CV or resume and your date of birth, and that will be enough for us to um, get an assessment out to you. I do know I had quite a few emails over the weekend asking for those. So anyone that's emailed over the weekend will aim to have those two in the next couple of days. Obviously, we'll have a lot, <laughs> a lot coming through. So just, um, yeah, please be patient with us on that front. But um, or if you have any questions, you know, about health or character concerns, or even just, you know, about part of the process, please reach out. We can, of course, assist. Thanks, Charlotte and Fabian. <clears throat> it's always a bit like an interview, isn't it, doing these Zoom meetings? Um, but look, we're happy to share any of our knowledge. Join our database and you'll get a monthly email from us. And um, if, you know, if your skills are in need, we'll reach out to you individually. <clears throat> we're happy to um, answer any specific questions about shift times and salaries and where the jobs are. Um, so we'd love to chat to you as well. But um, thanks for joining in the webinar from all around the world. It's always so exciting. I do miss my international travel, but it's always so exciting hearing from people from Africa and Europe and Singapore, uh, Canada, Australia. Oh, oh it's, it's fabulous. So um, yeah, come get in touch with us and um, we'll be happy to have you and give you some advice. And I don't think it's gonna snow in Christchurch, which is a bit sad, but it's pretty chilly. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you so much. Touch base soon. Bye. Okay, thanks. See you later. Kaki day.